The unification between electricity and magnetism became complete with the work of James Clerk Maxwell. So what he did, he wanted to look back over all of these experiments that we've been talking about and come up with a set of rules that described what, what was going on. Uh, so he comes up with four laws that have come to be known as Maxwell's laws. And they're essentially describing the, the things that we've seen already. So the first of these, it's often called Gauss's law, but this is exactly the same as the Coulomb's law that, uh, that your textbook talks about and that we talked about earlier. That is, it's this claim that Coulomb had come up with that you can find the force between any two electrical charges by multiplying the charges together and then dividing that by the square of the distance between them. The second one, the claim that there are more, no magnetic monopoles, is essentially claiming that you know you can't do the same thing for magnetism. There is no such thing as a sort of magnetic charge in the way that there's an electrical charge. Um, the third of these is the claim that if you have a changing magnetic field, this produces an electrical field. So this is uh, what Faraday had uh, had found with electromagnetic induction. Um, the fourth of these is that there's a changing electric field. A changing electric field produces a magnetic field. This is what both Ersted and Ampere um, had found when they were able to get magnetic fields uh, by, by putting a current through a wire. So as I said, he's sort of codifying all of the, uh, the things that people had been figuring out um, over the previous few decades. But while he's doing this, he notices something he realized that if you have, if, if a changing electric field produces a magnetic field, and a changing magnetic field produces an electric field, then what you could have happen is a situation in which they're continually inducing one another. Um, you, you can see the, uh, the, uh, the picture here, um, in which the electric field depicted in red, um, as you can see, uh, uh, there are moments when it, it's getting larger and larger. So that as the electric field is getting bigger and bigger, this means it's changing, which means it's going to start producing a magnetic field. Um, as you see, it reaches the top. What happens is that it stops changing quite so fast, which means that it's going to stop producing this magnetic field. You can see the magnetic field starts to fall, but then as it's falling, what happens is that once again, you're getting a change in the magnetic field, and that is going to in turn induce an electric field. So you get a, 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 an effect where they're just sort of ca keep calling each other into existence by the sort of rising and falling uh, that they're doing. So he figured out the sort of he worked out the math for this, uh, and he figured out that you could get a situation where you're getting these sine waves, which are sort of continually generating themselves, and they propagate forward. And he figured out exactly how fast these waves would be moving. And this turned out to be one of the sort of great surprises of his life. It turned out to be exactly the same as the speed of light. So scientists by this time had been able to calculate how fast light moved. They were able to do this by observing astronomical bodies and then calculating how fast uh, the light must have taken to reach Earth. So they knew what the speed of light was. The thing was, they really didn't know what light was um, up until this moment. Uh, so Maxwell finally had an answer to the question, what was light? For him, it was the propagation of these electromagnetic waves. So this was a big moment in the history of physics. We have a quote from Einstein here. So this change in the conception of reality is the most profound and the most fruitful that physics has experienced since the time of Newton. Einstein will cite Maxwell as his favorite, uh, his favorite scientist. We'll see what Einstein does with, uh, with Maxwell's equations later. Uh, but for the moment, we'll just end with the, this idea that um, not only do you have electricity and magnetism that have become thoroughly united, but you can see that uh, it's being used to explain what light is for the first time.